Welcome to Game Break, where I play old games, new games, good games, bad games, and we give them a harsh rating from 1 to 10. For today's review, we're going all the way back to 2009, a true turning point for gaming, with releases like Demon Souls, Borderlands, Final Fantasy XIII, Resident Evil 5, Left 4 Dead 2, and the release of a game that would explode my 9 year old brain. We're going back to a classic game, Batman Arkham Asylum. 13 years later, we're going to figure out where this game fares in the deep sea of all the great releases that came out in 2009. So over the week, I've had some time to play Batman Arkham Asylum. I've written down a review, and at the end of the video, we're going to rate it on a scale from 1 to 10. And with that out of the way, we can finally get into the video, and I hope you guys enjoy. So the game starts off with this opening scene where we can see Batman taking Joker back to Arkham Asylum in the Batmobile. When they arrive at the asylum, Batman feels that Joker is up to something because he caught him too easily, so he helps everybody transport him into the asylum. And not long after entering the asylum, Joker breaks free. And it's at this point in the story where it kind of becomes obvious that this was all kind of set up by the Joker so he can come back to Arkham Asylum and he's got some kind of plan. We soon find out that Joker has been working with one of the scientists in Arkham Asylum to make a formula which turns regular people into these type of monsters, which Joker calls Titans. And this pretty much becomes the main plot of the story, that Joker plans to release the formula onto all of Gotham City so he can create an army of Titans. So Joker leads Batman into this wild goose chase all around Arkham Asylum. And along the way, Batman runs into a whole bunch of familiar villains like Harley Quinn, Riddler, Bane, Poison Ivy, and a lot more which we'll get into later in the video. So the graphics in Batman Arkham Asylum really speak for themselves and they're great. And there's an extreme amount of detail to appreciate. The design of all the villains are really awesome. It's one of the coolest Jokers we've ever seen. It kind of looks like they took inspiration from the Killing Joke Joker. Either way, he has never looked better. The cutscenes are pleasing without being prolonged and boring. Also, since we're talking about graphics, I feel like we have to talk about Batman's cape for two reasons. One, the cape design and animation is incredible. It's one of the more realistic things I've seen throughout many video games. It just has like its own certain flow and it looks really cool. I feel like a lot of people might just shrug the cape off and that's kind of sad because the second reason I want to talk about it is the guy who designed the cape single-handedly put two years of animation work into it. And I also don't want to forget the added detail of Batman's suit getting more rough over time as you progress through the game and defeat certain bosses. So the game's kind of able to take some scenes that are visually grim, gray, which look awesome, and then also give you these scenes which are really bright, colorful, and I think that switch from both aspects really sucks you into the world of Batman. I think they did really good work, even though I feel like the actual visual of the cutscenes, like the graphics of the cutscenes, I think they just kind of feel split up between the actual game graphics and then the cutscene graphics. They're just kind of off in a way. But other than that, they did a really good job. Okay, let's move on to the next rating I want to talk about, which is mechanics. So I think we should talk about all of Batman's tools that he has. He has an array of tools, and some of them kind of feel like they were just shoved in there. Like, they give you the Batarang, and then once you upgrade to the triple Batarang, it still leaves you with the single Batarang, which kind of doesn't make sense. But other than that, they made all of the tools feel really useful, and they kind of made up for the ones that didn't feel so useful by making them accessible in combat. And since we're talking about mechanics, I'll just throw combat in there. The combat in Batman is wonderful. Even if at times Batman's 18 foot vertical jump seems kind of unrealistic, in a good way it gives it a comic book type of fighting style, which I thought was really cool. So Batman was the first to introduce this new combat system called free flow combat. And this was kind of a big deal as it was the first of its kind. And what it pretty much did was finally give combat a flow and a rhythm rather than just button mashing. This is one of the many reasons Arkham Asylum is so unique in my opinion. It keeps the game from getting very repetitive because most of the time you're going to be in combat. Many other games have tried to replicate this free flow combat and some have even borrowed the combat from Batman itself. Games like Spider-Man, Mad Max, and Shadow of Mortar all pretty much use the same combat system as Batman. I think anybody who has played the game or anybody who gives it a try would feel the same as me and would really enjoy the combat. With that being said, there are some aspects of the combat that aren't so good, like the counter-attack option. So when you see the blue icon above the enemies, that means you can counter-attack them. And when the counter-attack option works, it is really cool. But most of the time I found I'm either too far away from the enemy or too deep in a combo for the counter-attack to even register. So quite often I was just getting whacked in the head with a pipe. And even though you can use Batman's tools in combat, they never really felt that useful. And by the time I finally understood the combat and really got to get comfortable with it, I was pretty much at the end of the game. So I think it's time we finally talk about the actual gameplay. The gameplay here is very impressive. There's a ton of side missions, and if you plan on getting 100% completion, it's going to take you a while. There's just so much stuff to collect in this game. 
There are 240 of these Riddler trophies and scannable riddles throughout the asylum. There's also 24 of these stone slabs, which are called the Chronicles of Arkham. These pretty much tell the story of Amadeus Arkham and his family history. These are really interesting pieces of lore, and I found myself listening to most of them through my playthrough. There's also these mechanical teeth all around the asylum that you can destroy with your battering. The hard part about it is a lot of these parts aren't accessible in the early game, so you'll have to come back later after getting certain tools if you want to complete the game to 100%. But you don't have to go around collecting trophies and scanning everything just to enjoy the game. There's a bunch of boss fights and I won't spoil all of them, but there is one villain that we have to talk about, and that's Scarecrow. Arkham Asylum would not be the game it is without the appearance of Scarecrow. The way the game transitions into the Scarecrow levels is really cool. Everything kind of gets more grim and dark, these bugs show up from all over the place, and Batman's eyes start to turn red as he starts to hallucinate. Once you're in the Scarecrow level, the game kind of changes into this platformer where the objective is to not be seen by Scarecrow. So you'll have to hide behind certain objects and time when you're gonna move to the next object so you're not caught in the gaze of Scarecrow. He actually has a few different levels with each one being a little bit longer and more challenging. This is by far one of my favorite villains in the series. Although there are a bunch of other boss fights. The boss fights that require you to use different tools and time things out are some of the more fun ones. But there are some of the boss fights like Bane, for example, that are pretty short and boring. I felt like he's pretty much just a reskinned titan and has no unique attacks. There's also a bunch of information scattered throughout Arkham about a lot of the villains, even the ones that aren't in the game. I really like that they added this. It's kind of something for the bigger fans of Batman to appreciate. And even if you're not a deeper fan, it's just interesting to read their backstories. So in the game, you'll get to a room that you have to clear before you can move on. This happens quite often and it gets really strategic at times. Most of the guards usually will have guns so you can't just drop down and start swinging or you'll get shot. You have to kind of time your attacks, lead enemies away from each other, and quietly take them out one by one. The x-ray mode makes this part really fun because you can see how many enemies are in a room, who's armed and who isn't, and even their current condition, which doesn't do much, but it's nice to see the extra amount of detail the developers added. So the story in Batman is pretty simple and straightforward. The later games in the series do a way better job of storytelling. But with Arkham Asylum being the first game in the series, it gets a certain amount of slack, story-wise. It was one of those games where it's about the experience up to the final level and not the final level itself. It's kind of about the friends you made along the way, or in Batman's case, the friends you didn't make. I actually found myself getting so wrapped up in side stories and lore that when I got back to the main story, I was a little lost at times. But in my opinion, I don't consider that to be a bad thing. The thing I love about Arkham Asylum is this story sparked the flame for the rest of the games in the series. The game on its own is a classic. It's hard enough to find enjoyable superhero games these days, even with the flood of releases. But Arkham Asylum created something we've never seen before all the way back in 2009. And with the grittiness and dark storytelling, it was unlike anything we've seen at that time. Arkham Asylum kind of gave us exactly what we wanted before we even knew that we wanted it. And going back and playing the game all these years later, it was without a doubt one of the more fun games I've played in a while. It made me realize how ahead of its time this game was, and how much I enjoyed it. So if it's been a long time since you've played this game, I would definitely suggest you replay it again. And if you somehow never played Arkham Asylum, I would say it's a must-play game for you. So before I rate the game, I just want to say, I'm going to be extremely tight with the ratings, so people watching can get an honest opinion. Even a game I love like Arkham Asylum, I'm going to factor in as many details as I can. And after playing the game and thinking it over, my personal rating that I'm giving Batman Arkham Asylum is an 8.8 .8 out of 10. That doesn't mean Arkham Asylum did anything wrong, but it has its flaws here and there like all games do. The final boss level was very anticlimactic. There's clipping issues that you'll find from time to time. But overall, Batman is a great game, and I think it really shined through all the releases of 2009 and even made way for better games to come in the future. Either way, let me know your opinions on the review. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on the game grade series that are more in depth, but for now I figured I would do something short and simple that everyone can enjoy. So that's all for this video and thank you for watching.